For the first time we have uh, used the tourbillon movement in the shock absorber system. And the tourbillon movement is bigger than the one we used in the previous shock absorber system. So we try to make it as light as possible and that's why we made a skeletonized movement. We use uh, light components like uh, titanium rings, for example, and also for the BMG spring that has a very high elasticity. And for this specific watch, we had to recalculate the whole springs because the movement is also bigger than the previous one. And uh, that was quite a challenge. squeeze the molten metal very rapidly to prevent the crystallization. You have to melt it and then cool it in nanoseconds. And that is a process you do by injection and uh, it's a very complex process. One shot and then you can do a surface finishing. But you have to create a mold where you inject uh, the molten metal. And of course this has to be uh, very accurate already. For the first shock absorber, we tried really to push the boundaries, to make it as robust as possible, and that's why we went up to 30,000 G. Here, it was not the goal to beat uh, 30,000 G, but the goal was to make a tourbillon movement really uh, going into the direction of a sports watch. So sports watches usually are tested at 5,000 G, and we wanted absolutely to be in that area. And uh, with our development and experience, we could even lift it up to 10,000 G. So this uh, shock absorber tourbillon is, is absolutely in the sports watch uh, regime today. We relaunched the engineer two years ago and this year we add a ceramic watch and also for the first time we use a ceramic bracelet in the engineer line which was also quite complex. We had a, quite a challenging surface treatment as well because we don't want to have a very shiny ceramic components so we do for example uh, polishing and uh, grinding and then we do a sand blasting after that process to make it a little bit more matte, a little bit more subtle. I remember when we had uh, the first samples or the first prototypes, it, they were too shiny and then we decided, okay, the sandblasting has to be adapted, we need to do uh, a little bit longer or more pressure for the sandblasting and that's a kind of a iteration process. So we produce first components, first prototype and then we decide how we have to adapt exactly those surface processing. If you create a ceramic bracelet, you cannot use the same technical drawings as for the metal components, for steel for example. So we had to adapt uh, according to our experience with ceramic all the technical drawings and the whole design of the bracelet is a little bit different than uh, the steel one because the, the ceramic is much more brittle than uh, a standard steel material. And in ceramic you cannot produce sharp edges because it would be kind of a risk for fracture. So we have, for example, when we have sharp edges, we need to round it a little bit to make the ceramic components uh, more, more uh, robust.